Hello and welcome to Let's Create with the City of Tampa's Visual Arts Studios. My name is Chris Van Hillo and today we will be making a kite collage. Before we begin, let's go over the materials that will be needed. We'll need some construction paper in bright colors, glue stick, Elmer's glue, a cereal box or some cardboard to give some stability to our project. We're going to need some cotton balls, scissors, ruler, pencil, black sharpie, crayons, colored pencils, magazine, fabric, anything you can think of to come up with your kite material. If you're going to use a cereal box, go ahead and cut the sides off. You can either use blue, a shade of blue construction paper for your sky, and I would glue that down to a cereal box and then cut off the sides, or you can work directly on the cardboard with paint, markers, colored pencils, crayolas, and create your sky. So since kites fly up in the sky, our background is going to be a sky. One of my favorite ways to decorate or paint a large surface area is to do uh, faux painting. So what I'm going to do is just put a couple of different colors of blue paint down on this paper plate. Then I'm going to take a sponge or you could use a paper towel and wet, get all the water out of it. And then I'm going to take it into my paints and kind of wad it up like this. And I'm going to dab and I'm just going to start faux, I call it faux painting my background. So as you can see, it's able to give me a large surface area at one time. There's my finished background and I'm just going to move this to the side and let it dry. Here's an example of a piece I did on a uh, just a solid piece of construction paper that I had glued on top of a cereal box. So since I've already done one in this light blue, I think I'll go with this color blue and start creating my work on here to try to fit three or four kites on here and I really like using the bright colors so what I'm going to do to create my first kite is I'm just going to draw a cross and then I'm going to connect my corners so that corner will connect to there that corner will connect to there I'm just drawing straight lines, connecting my corners. Then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut this out. There's my first kite. That's kind of a small kite, so I might want to have a kite a little bit larger. So keep that in mind when you do your second kite. So this time I'm going to draw my cross and I'm just going to make it a little bit larger. And it doesn't really matter if your lines are perfectly straight. It doesn't matter if they're actually, I think it's kind of cool when they bend because it indicates movement. Straight lines indicate things are very, very still. But when your lines are curved and they move, it, it almost makes them look like they're maybe blowing in the breeze. So here's my second kite. And I'm just going to keep cutting kites until I have filled my sky and I'm happy. Some of the 
kites, all of the kites should actually have a cross drawn on them. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm really going to press down on that line. And really press down on that line. Because then I'm going to turn my kite over and I want to fold it on both of those lines. Because when I fold it, now it's kind of puffed up instead of laying flat because it has a little bit of a fold. And I like that because it's going to stand off the paper. So if I take my pencil and just press down on that line, I'm kind of embossing it. It's called embossing. And it's going to make it a little easier for me to fold. You can actually see the line from the other side. I want these kites to stand off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut little strips of construction paper, narrow little strips of construction paper, like that. And then I'm going to wrap them around like, let's say I, like I was making a paper ring, okay? I'm just gonna wrap them around like this. And I'm gonna take my glue stick and I'm going to add a little glue right there on the end. And I'm going to wrap this around, press down where that glue is. Sometimes I like to take a pencil and put it inside there so I can really press, press down hard. I'm just going to press that on there. And then I'm going to let it sit to dry. I have all my kites cut out and I have all my little rings glued together. And before I glue the rings to the back of my kites, I'm going to go ahead with a fine point sharpie and I'm just going to do some design. This one I think I'll just do a spiral. This one I'm going to do a continuous square. This one I'm just going to come out as a starburst from the center. So I'm just going to draw lines. By adding these little designs, it's just adding texture and movement to our piece. Once I've laid out how I want my kites to be designed, I'm going to turn them over and put some glue down with my glue stick and I'm going to add that little uh, ring that we made into the center. As we lay our kites down, I want you to be thinking about foreground and background. Things that are larger are going to be in the foreground, and as they start to go away from us, they get smaller. So we want our larger kites to be closer to this edge, and our smaller kites need to be closer to the top, indicating that those are further away from us. Okay? Once you have your kites positioned the way you want them, you're gonna go ahead and turn them over, and add some glue. I think for this part of the project I'm going to switch to Elmer's glue and I want to say that be sure you don't come too close to the bottom because we're going to be drawing tails on the bottom of our kites and we're going to be adding our fabric for our tails. So make sure you don't bring the kite all the way to the bottom or you won't be able to add that tail. I really like how those little rings give you that standoff look. Can you see how they're not 
laying flat on the paper, they're kind of standing off, which gives them, again, an element of movement. I'm going to take a Sharpie, and now this time I'm probably going to use a, a thicker Sharpie, and I'm going to go ahead and add my tails. And I want my kites, I want the tails to have movement. I want them to look like they're blowing the breeze. So I'm not going to do a straight line because a straight line indicates that things are very, very still. I want my kites to be jumping up in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and really make some curvy lines. No one could think these kites were standing still. The adding of the tails is completely up to you. You remember how we had cut these strips to make our little rings to glue to the back of our kites? It's the same thing for a tail. You're going to cut a little strip, then you're going to cut a box, and then you're just going to cut on the diagonal so that you end up with two triangles and those are going to go on either side of the line that you just drew as your tail. So you can either use strips of paper, strips of fabric, or you could take a Sharpie or Crayolas or colored pencils and you could color in your tails. Since I've done the construction paper tails on this project, let's go ahead and get some colored pencils to color in our tails on this project. For those of you that think your kite doesn't need a tail, oh my, 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 yes, your kite does need a tail. If you ever tried to fly a kite that doesn't have a tail, they roll and they spin and they can't climb up in the air. So take time, make sure your kites get some nice tails on them so they can really climb high up in the sky. Before we're finished with our project, we're going to take a cotton ball and we're going to kind of, oh, that's kind of fun. We're going to kind of pull these cotton balls apart and we're going to make fluffy little clouds with our fingers and then we're just going to glue them down. And this is going to add some extra texture to our piece. So you're just going to take some Elmer's glue, give it a couple of drops, and you're just going to drop it down on top of your piece. If it's covering a little bit of the tail, that's okay because sometimes your kite, you know, might go behind the clouds. It would be pretty high up to do that, I guess, wouldn't it? So, just to review, our lesson today was texture and movement as two of the elements of art. And as you can see, we added some texture when we drew in our lines on our kites. We added some movement by allowing our tails to curl. We also added movement by bending our kite and standing them off the surface so it looks like they are moving in the breeze. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Join us again soon for another installment of Let's Create with the City of Tampa's Art Studios. And remember, stay calm, stay kind, stay safe, and always stay creative. Oh,